Hello everyone, welcome back to the Syntax UK YouTube channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be bringing you the second episode in our new Syntax Explains series. I'll be breaking down some of the terminology that you're likely to hear in the sound engineering, music recording and audio production world. I'll also be explaining the differences between some of the many professional audio devices we supply here at Syntax Audio UK from our brands such as RME, Ferrofish, Calrec, Apsis and Direct Out. Now in our last episode, I answered the question, what is an audio interface? And if you've not watched that yet, click the pop out in the video to go back and watch it now. In this episode, I'll be talking about microphone preamps. A microphone preamplifier, also known as a mic preamp or even just a pre, amplifies the weak low level signal of a microphone to line level. Now you can think of line level as sort of the standard operating level of most recording equipment. Microphone signals are often some way from a decent recording level. In some cases, this could be 60 dB or even lower. So in its most basic terms, a microphone preamp is taking the microphone signal and making it loud enough to record. It's worth noting that many audio interfaces will already feature mic preamps, though the quality of those on cheaper interfaces will be noticeably different to more expensive ones. But for the most part, these are good enough to get started. In most cases, gain control is offered on the front panel of a microphone preamp, usually in the form of something like an encoder knob. But sometimes gains can be controlled digitally via the front panel of the microphone preamp or via software, as is the case with the RME Optimic XTC and newer RME 12 mic. And I'll be diving into some of the benefits of digital control in terms of preamps a little bit later. But some of the benefits include being able to change gains from a distance away from the unit or for simply being able to recall gains and other parameters with the click of a button. There are three primary types of microphone, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon. Now of those three, condenser microphones require additional power to operate. And this is where phantom power comes in. The phantom power was designed to allow DC current to be sent through the XLR cable connected to a microphone so that there's no need for external power supplies. Microphone preamps or audio interfaces with microphone preamps will feature a phantom power button, whether that's physical or digital via software. And this will be sometimes displayed as 48V, which means 48 volts. And when this is pressed, this will send that DC current through the XLR to the microphone providing power. RME's 24 channel Babyface Pro also has the ability to send phantom power through both mic preamps with only bus power and that is quite unique as well. It's worth noting that phantom power should never be used with a ribbon microphone because this could cause serious serious damage to the mic. Some microphone preamps like RME's Optimic XTC and 12 mic feature intuitive front panel controls which allow you to take a deeper dive into some of the parameters of your microphone preamp. This could be for things like routing, monitoring and creating and controlling gain groups which essentially allows you to group channels all at once for consistency. We touched on digitally controlled microphone preamps a little bit earlier and one of the things that comes with digitally controlled preamps is the ability to control them remotely. As I said earlier, this remote control is found on preamps like the Optimic XTC and the 12 mic. Remote control makes it possible to do things like control the gains of a preamp in the live room from the control room, as well as for when you're on location and the microphone preamp is placed far away from the computer. RME's 12 mic also features the next generation audio networking capabilities of AVB, meaning that things like phantom power, as well as gains and routing can all be controlled from anywhere on an AVB network. The 12 mic also gives you access to RME's brand new web remote, which is an all new remote control interface. If you're unfamiliar with the web remote, you can check it out via the pop out in the video now. 
mentioned earlier that audio interfaces already feature microphone preamps. Now the quality of these may be lower on cheaper interfaces than they are on more expensive interfaces, but if you've already got microphone preamps, why would you want to invest in an external mic pre? Well, a good microphone preamp is bringing several improvements to your recording, as well as some features that are making this possible. One factor to consider is gain. Now, microphone gain controls the loudness of the microphone input. Some microphones require a great deal of gain to get a decent recording level out, sometimes even above the 60 dB that I mentioned earlier. The microphone preamps on many lower quality interfaces as well as cheaper microphone pres may only feature 60 dB of gain, which is simply not enough for some microphones with incredibly low output. Microphone preamps like RME's 12 mic features 75 dB of gain, which would be enough for even the most demanding of microphones. Going hand in hand with gain is noise and on lower quality microphone preamps, the higher the gain, the more noise is introduced to the signal. It's no good having increased gain if by adding the gain, you're also going to be adding the noise and actually lowering the quality of your recording in the process. This is why it's worth investing in a high quality preamp because preamps like the RME 12 mic or Optimic XTC have always been revered for their low noise characteristics, even at incredibly high gain. Another aspect of a good microphone preamp is sound characteristics or transparency. Now you may buy an external microphone preamp so that you can impart a certain color into your sound. This may be a kind of vintage sounding microphone preamp, for instance, or something that you can drive so that it's got that really nice overdriven sound. Or you may just be looking to record something as faithfully as possible. This is where transparency comes in. And in terms of audio production, transparency is this idea that what you put into your your recording is what you'll get out so that you'll hear exactly as it should sound when it was recorded. And this is something that RME have always been all about is the idea that the sound that you record should be exactly what you hear. Another reason for adding an external microphone preamp to your setup is simply that you need to record more microphones. With most interfaces like RME's UCX2 or Babyface Pro FS coming with only two microphone preamps and the bigger interfaces like the 802 and UFX series coming with four, that's simply not enough to record things like a full drum kit or a live band for instance. So by adding a preamp like the 12 channel 12 mic, you've got the ability to record a whole load of microphones all at once. Another side note, it's worth pointing out that although I've said that audio interfaces can feature microphone preamps, a microphone preamp is not an audio interface. So if you have an external microphone preamp, it still needs to be connected to an audio interface to be able to be recorded into your DAW. There are a few different ways to connect an external microphone preamp to an audio interface and these usually vary depending on the channel count on the pre. Smaller two channel or four channel microphone preamps like the Quad Mic 2 connect to an audio interface using analog connections. This is done by taking the output of your microphone preamp and connecting it to the line level inputs usually found on the back of your interface. Do not plug the output of the external preamp into the microphone preamps on the front of your audio interface if you have them, as the signal has already been boosted to line level so it doesn't actually need to be plugged in here. Many other high channel count pres, like the Optimic XTC or 12 mic for example, will also use digital connections as a means of getting a high number of channels through a small amount of cables. For instance, the Optimic XTC features both ADAT and MADI. Connecting via ADAT is really simple because it means that you get the full eight channels of the Optimic XTC into your audio interface via one optical Toslink cable and that makes it a really quick, really simple expansion to your recording setup. MADI is another digital format and as I say if you're unfamiliar with it, it is something that we will be going into in a future Synthetics Explains video.
So that's it for our look at microphone preamps. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please do give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you wanna see the videos that are coming soon to this series. If you haven't seen part one where I take a deep dive into audio interfaces, then you can click the pop out in the video now to go back and watch that. And as always, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section if there's any ideas you have for things that you would like to see explained in this series. Thanks very much guys and I will see you again next time.